Lounge. Hello? Ah, uh, hello. Is Mink Stoll there? This is Mink. Is this Dustin? This is. How you doing? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I am great. I'm here with my co-host, Tun. Hey there. How you doing? Hi, Tun. <laughs> Tun, T-O-N? That's right. You're the first one ever to get it on the first shot. Oh, I'm a good speller. Yeah, she is. <laughs> Well, it's nice to meet you guys. She could tell on your voice, I think, that you were a ton. <laughs> I can spell. Yeah. Catholic school. Yep, that'll do it. That's good. Mm. All those rulers and slaps on the wrist. All those rulers and those nuns. Yeah, that's what I got. You had them too, a medieval kind? I had, yeah, just for one, just for kindergarten, that was it. Oh, okay. Lots of slaps on the that. wrist. And then my really? mom, I think all the red marks, my mom was like, all right, you're out of here. <laughs> well, that was it. What's the five count mean? It's a, a pro wrestling terminology, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I would never in a million years have known that. <laughs> That's why we don't uh, talk to a lot of girls on this show, actually. <laughs> Is that right? That's not true. <laughs> That's why we don't mention it until after the interviews. I have nothing against pro wrestling. <laughs> That's just I don't a... watch it, but I don't think all pro wrestlers should be shot. <laughs> I think it's just the girls that have something against us, maybe, or. Maybe. Well, yeah. Well, you. Me in particular. I happen to be in good <laughs> standings with the females. That's true. I shouldn't speak for everyone. <laughs> okay, and it's not all about wrestling? No. No, it's not. <laughs> Don't worry. We didn't We didn't invite you on a, a pro wrestling show. It's just just the name. <laughs> like I said, I, wouldn't have, I would have come. <laughs> you know, I've got nothing against wrestlers. Oh, that's great. Some of them are cute. They yeah, rock. Well, that's why we like it. Pro wrestler? Yeah. Yep. The Rock. Yeah. He's kind of hunky. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We agree. We agree. Yeah. (laughs) Now, is this um, Minnesota University? Uh, Yeah. Okay. Is this your alma mater by chance? No. No, no, it's not. I've I've never been to Minnesota. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah. But I I was disappointed last year. I had, uh, there was a possibility of my getting to Minneapolis, which didn't come through. And I was very disappointed. Because I hear that it's a wonderful town. Well, if you need a place to stay, just let us know. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I will. Hi, it's Ming. Can I come and stay with you for a couple of weeks? Yeah, sure, <laughs> sure. Dusty would, too. Sure, come on <laughs> over. <laughs> okay. Your wife and kids okay with that? I'm not with any kids, so you can uh, play with all the toys. You don't have to worry about sharing. Or Yeah, his woman does have a lot of toys, but I mean. Is that right? Yeah, there is a lot of toys. Like, there's my he has my pet monster, and there's GI Joes around. I'm not even joking, by the way. Hey, no, this is we're not interviewing what? me here. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, we have some questions for you, if that's all right. Then we can get back to to my life. Okay, because your life is far more interesting. Yeah. Well. <laughs> no, truly, I'm sure it is actually. But but go ahead, ask me. I'll see if I can be clever for you. Okay. Well, no pressure. Thanks. Well, in the um, early days. Can you tell us kind of how you met up with John Waters and the rest of the Dreamlanders crew and kind of started making those early films? Yeah, uh, I met John um, actually through my sister, who had known him in Baltimore. I met him in Provincetown on Cape Cod. We were the, both there. This, this was the summer of 1966, before many of your listeners were born. And uh, we met, and we hit it off. Um, by At that point, he had made one... I think 10 or 15 minute black and white 8 millimeter film. So he wasn't famous, but he was extraordinary and nonetheless he was incredibly charismatic. And we hit it off and by the end of that summer we he and I and about seven other people were roommates uh living in a very funky place on the on the outside of Provincetown. And then he and I moved to New York in the fall. We took an apartment for a month. And, well, I mean, we were planning to stay, but we both got homesick, so we moved back to Baltimore. And this is how how young we were. He moved back in with his parents, and I moved back in with my mom. So, um, you know, I got a call from him one day saying, hey, you want to be in this movie I'm doing? And I'm like, duh, of course. (laughs) And And this was a movie called Roman Candles, which is never seen. It's triple projected, needs a tape recorder and three projectors to show. But... You know, that I did that one, and then in the next one, um, you know, I had a, that, that one was just, a, you know, a lot of different scenes cut together. It wasn't really a storyline. In the next one, there was a storyline, and I played a few parts. And I mean, I, I played multiple roles in the next few films. And then in uh, Multiple Maniacs, which was, uh, I don't know, we were still in the 60s then, I had an actual role. I had an actual 
actual... Re- I played other parts, too, but that was my first sort of starring vehicle, as you might say. Yeah. Well, then, um, you had one of the main roles in Pink Flamingos. Oh, yes. That was uh, kind of one of his... I guess you'd call it a feature film. Well, yes. Now, this, this was actually um, his third feature-length film, but it was the first color film. Right, okay. And... Uh, and it certainly was the most ambitious to date. It was the most ambitious of, ambitious of his films to that point. Yeah, what was it like uh, filming that? Was there any weird stories or any kind of controversy? I mean, you guys did a lot of stuff in there that would probably scare the squares, you know. Well, actually, talking about scaring the squares, there's, there was one night we were rehearsing. We, we had a strange rehearsal process. We would, when we started making the film, we did not have a completed script. We would get together on, say, a Tuesday night, and John would hand us our copies of the scripts, and we would read through the scene that we, you know, we would read through whatever we were going to be filming on the weekend, and John would read everybody's parts exactly the way he wanted them read, only he read everybody's parts exactly the same. (laughs) So our job was to sort of try to take what he wanted and and make it our own, but the, uh, he liked a lot of, you know, he liked a lot of emphasis. He, he speaks, you know, he spoke everything kind of italics, which if you watch the films, you can see we're yeah. all very urgent. Everything we say is very urgent. But there was one night we were rehearsing, we were rehearsing the scene where, I, I think it was uh, the girls in the pit, one of the girls is screaming about the baby died and now you're going to steal my baby and, you know, blah, 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 and she, you're, you're going to let her die too. Yeah, you know, it's this rant about stealing babies and dying. <laughs> and we heard this very timid knock on our front door. And there was a couple standing out there going, is this the doctor's office? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> the doctor lived next door. <laughs> but we got a kick out of that. And then... John and I actually were roommates at that point. We lived on the set of the Marble House. That was our actual home. <laughs> oh. So, uh, you know, the, the, not the, so the public rooms in the house, the living room and dining room, were, were our living room and dining room. And the bedroom that we used was my bedroom. We, ne- we, never, got to sh- we never shot in John's private quarters. Oh, of course. <laughs> yes. It's kind of like uh, extreme method acting. Kind of. Yeah, except that the furniture didn't actually move most of the time. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but that's also the movie where I didn't set my hair on fire. That's like a prerequisite for most of the well, roles I you get? asked. John had asked me if I would do it, and I had, you know, just broken up with my boyfriend and was depressed and said yes. And then as the time grew nearer and nearer to filming the scene, I got more and more scared about doing it and the uh, the idea was that I would sit in a chair and there would be two people behind me one with a lit match and one with a bucket of water <laughs> and, and I panicked I said I can't do it I said I, I get it that it would be beautiful it'd be fabulous but I don't see how I can possibly sit there and not show fear knowing what was going to happen I don't think I'm quite that good an actor and so I didn't do it and John was annoyed Wow. Well, well, he'd already bought me the wig. Huh. You know, he, I mean, he had bought me the wig that I was to wear while my hair was growing back. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I, I, I never it. regretted not doing it because by the end of the movie, after Divine Eats the Dog Poop, <laughs> nobody would have remembered, and I might be bald today. Yeah. That's true. That bucket of water might not have might done not the have trick. Yeah. Might not have gotten there in time. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, did you realize, or even at that time, did you think at all that it would have such a cult following so so long after? No, no. I mean, we knew we were sort of a big deal locally. Uh, I mean, not a huge deal because, you know, this is Baltimore. So, um, you know, th- things sort of roll off people's backs here. We, and we hadn't, you know, we'd shown the films at, at we'd shown all the films. They'd all had a nice reception, but, you know, it was very local. So, no, there was actually really no way to know. I mean, we, we were all having a great time. You know, we loved doing it, and we loved being a part of it, but we had no idea that what we were a part of was going to have such an impact. Was there a lot of um, negative impact around the time when the film first came out, as far as, like, controversy or anything? Well, sure, but, you know, it didn't really affect me. John sort of took the brunt of all of that. I mean, he turned he turned every negative review into a selling feature. Yeah. 
You know, I mean, he, he posted the worst reviews on the posters. You know, he printed them on the posters and in all the ads. You know, I mean, he, he went after the crowd that was going to enjoy watching a movie where, you know, that, the, that appalled the critics. I mean, that was, part of, that was part of it. I mean, he deliberately made a movie that was appalling. Yeah. It was very specific, very deliberate to do that. And he wrote every word. You know, there's no ad-libbing in any of these. We, we, still, we still, every now and then, find people who sort of think it was documentary. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people have asked me, this hasn't happened in really a long time, but people have actually asked me if I still live in the trailer. Wow. And I have to tell them that, first of all, I never lived in the trailer, that Divine lived in the trailer, and second of all, if you were paying any attention, I burned it to the ground. <laughs> so it's not, you know, <clears throat> nobody lives in it. It's actually, I think, been buried, and now there's a housing development on top of it. They thought maybe it was a doctor's office that went down or something. Exactly, yeah. something. <laughs> With the way that John kind of marketed these films, using the negatives to kind of spread the word, did that make it easier to release the uh, the films that followed it, like Female Trouble or Test well, for a Living? Know, or... Those are actually John questions. I had never had anything to do with the marketing, aside from walking around, walking the streets of Provincetown, handing out flyers whenever right. we were going to show one of them. Or you know, I mean, we used to go wild posting in Baltimore whenever we were going to show a film. We would go out and you know hang flyers everywhere. You know, the uh, windshields of cars, telephone booths, laundromats. I mean, we really papered the town. But other than that, all of the business end of it, all of the marketing was John. He's really kind of amazing. Well, did you notice on set at all that maybe uh, you guys had that in mind, that maybe something you were filming might cause people to be upset, or did you do that on, oh, more well, on purpose? Or? We certainly, all the anti-Catholic stuff that we did early, yeah, in Multiple Maniacs and Mondo Trasho, we knew that that would piss people off. But that was just sort of a side perk. <laughs> You know, I mean, I grew, I grew, you know, like you, I grew up Catholic. So the idea, and I was, an, I was angry. I was a very angry uh, ex-Catholic. So I relished this. I mean, this for me was great. To be able to stick it to Catholicism was really fun for me. So, so um, I mean, I feel that I was very lucky that I was given a, a, a way to publicly vent my rage at the Catholic Church. Yeah. So, yeah, that was deliberate. That was deliberate, and... Um, uh, for those of us on the set who, uh, you know, who were Catholic, not all of us were, but many of us were. Baltimore's a Catholic town, so lots of us were Catholic, and we were happy to do it. We enjoyed it. I mean, that, was, that just added to our pleasure. And it pissed off my mom, and I like that, too. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of have a similar relationship with the higher-ups here at the station, so. Yeah, so when you get a chance to stick it to them a little bit, it's fun. <laughs> So uh, with that being said, when you guys were filming Hairspray, did you realize that it would be kind of the other side of the spectrum and be more family-friendly when you were... Well, we knew it was more family-friendly. I mean, that was obvious. You know, no, nobody was eating anything they shouldn't be eating. Nobody was, you know, I mean, there was, you know, there was no inappropriate sexuality. There was, there was no overt homosexuality. I mean, it was very, we knew it was family-friendly. Yeah. And I actually thought that the person that was going to be the breakout star of that movie was Colleen Fitzpatrick. And she played Amber Van Tussel. She actually became the singer of Vitamin C. Okay. Hmm. But I, I thought that she would be the breakout rather than Ricky Lake. Although, I, you know, Ricky Lake was adorable and charming. I, I didn't, I, I saw her, she had definite appeal, but I, I was really surprised and pleased at the fact that she became such a big star and such a symbol of, uh, I don't want to say overweight empowerment, but... <laughs> right, right. Mm -hmm. and, but she really was. And she's a lovely girl. I mean, girl, she's a woman. She's a lovely woman. She was a, she was a nice kid. She's a, she's a very nice woman. You had kind of more mainstream success with that film than any of the other ones previous. Do you feel changed the way that you guys made the films, or...? Was it just kind yeah, of a that was our first. That that film actually broke some ground for us in a couple of ways. First of all, it was our first Screen Actors Guild movie, so it was the first movie where we were bound by union rules, which meant they had to feed us regularly, <laughs> and you know only work a certain number of hours, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there were that was. Um, I mean, we never starved on set, but we would have to go, you know, long periods of time, sometimes without food, you know, when we when we were still. Um, technically indie. Yeah. So 
So the, the union rules were actually a nice change. That, that was a huge step forward. Uh, union rules, union pay, all of that stuff. And also we had people like, um, you know, we had Debbie Harry and Sonny Bono and Ruth Brown, whom I adore. You know, she was wonderful. I mean, we had had, um, you know, we'd had Tab Hunter and uh, we'd had um, Liz Renee, but Tap Hunter was a big movie star, but Liz Renee was sort of a, a we had her in, in Female Trouble, but she wasn't a star of the caliber, let's say Sonny Bono and, and Debbie Harry were, and right. Ruth Brown, I and mean, they were the music stars. So it was really kind of um, interesting to have, it was nice to have them around, and they were all lovely to work with. You know, there were a lot of, uh, you know, Rick Ocasek, you know, big stars, big, big music stars in that movie. And I guess you could even count Pia Zadora. Yeah. You know, as she, she's a singer. So, so that was, you know, we, we had trailers. We, you know, we had all sorts of, you know, we went way up scale for us on that film. And that was, for me, that was the most interesting thing, just the, the practical changes of it. And also for me, that movie was different because I was on the side of the good people in that film. <laughs> U- usually I was the bad foil. Yeah. You know, I, I was the one who would get mine in the end, literally. So <laughs> this was one I didn't die, and I was a good person. So those were changes for me. What was it like working with Divine? I know that was his last film, right? I loved working with Divine. Divine was a really wonderful actor. I, I did stage and, I mean, I did theater with Divine as well. Okay. You know, she and, he and I, excuse me, he and I would worked with the Cockettes. Uh, this drag troupe in San Francisco in the early 70s after Pink Flamingos. And um, I did a couple of, I did a play with him, another play with him, very small play in San Francisco as well. And he was always a wonderful actor. The tragedy is that he was just beginning to be appreciated as a really good actor when he died. Right. You know, he was, you know, getting men's roles and and doing, doing more serious parts. You know, rather than just being this flamboyant visual. So, uh, but he was a wonderful actor, and I loved working with him on screen. I always felt he was always very generous. He never tried to, up, he, you know, he never upstaged me. I, I mean, I had to work really hard to be seen. You know, when the two of us were on screen, it was like up to me to be seen because, I mean, the eye is just drawn right. to him. But we worked very well together. And, I, you know, I loved Divine. We were we were friends as well as coworkers. You know, we had a lot of laughs. Well, after his death, was it difficult to continue making the films since he was such a a big part of all the ones before it? Um. Yes, it was. It was very sad. But you know, we we lost. Um, we lost. I mean, John really lost his muse. Right. Divine was his actual was really his muse, and I don't think he ever expected to be without him. So it, it was hard, but that's another question really for John. Right. Well, I think out of all these films, my favorite at least would be Cry Baby. Really? I think so. Is that an odd one to, to choose? or? Well, it is. I, personally, I feel less connected to that movie than I do to the others because I have such a, I have such a small role in it. The, um, I mean, I shot a lot of footage that ultimately didn't make it into the movie. I had a good time on it. You know, met some very interesting people. Yeah. Spent a day in an iron lung, which is a really strange experience because you have <laughs> absolutely no visual contact with your own person. Hmm. Ima- I mean, imagine that. Imagine having absolutely no visual contact with yourself. It's very strange hmm. because there's a mirror above your head, but that you can't even see your face in it because that's for other people to look into so you can talk to them. Wow. So, I mean, you can touch. <laughs> you know, there's, there's a tactile but there is no visual connection, and it's it's really disconcerting. <laughs> it's like a floating um, head or something. Kind of, yeah. It really it really was very odd. And tap and uh, Troy Donny, who kept sticking his hands in, I had to keep smacking him away. He was kind of a, <laughs> you know, he thought it was funny. It actually was. He was he was very sweet to work with. What would you say your favorite film would be then? My favorite of the John of the movies I've made with John is absolutely Female Trouble. Okay. Yeah, very definitely. Partly because I love Mike. I mean, I, I think it's the movie that um, I think the entire production is astonishing. I think Van Smith should have won an Oscar for his costume work. 
costumes and makeup. I, and I thought the set decoration, everything is so completely insane in that movie. <laughs> and yet it is so grounded in a certain kind of reality that it absolutely works for me. I, I mean, I, I watched the, uh, I actually saw it recently. I hosted a screening of it. And I, saw, I don't, you know, actually watch the movies that often. But I, I hosted a screening and I watched it and I was still impressed with the way it held up. Well, you're the one of, I think, is there somebody else besides you that was, has been in all the feature Actually, films? I'm or? not in all of his movies. There are three short films that he made that I am not in. Oh, I am in all ones, of the so. feature films. Okay. The only person alive who has been in all the films is Mary Vivian Pierce. Okay. okay. And she was even in the movie that he had made, the 10-minute black and white feature, the 10-minute black and white film that he had made before, the, you know, before I met him. She's even in that, and they were child. They're, they were childhood friends, and she now lives in Nicaragua. Wow. <laughs> well, she's, Natural she's, progression of things, I guess. <laughs> she, well, she lives in Nicaragua. She teaches English to Nicaraguan kids or adults. I don't know, but she's okay. she likes it there. She comes back every you know a couple times a year, but she's she likes Nicaragua. Well, do you still kind of keep in touch with anybody or with everyone, or is there any new films in the works or anything? Well, there's no new John Waters films. I mean, I've made films. You know, I've done a lot of work without it. Yeah. I don't know if you've if you've looked if you looked at my IMDb page, but um, I've made more films without him than I've made with him. So uh, he doesn't have anything in the works. You know, his book just came his his best selling book just came out in paperback. He is an incredibly busy man, but you know, you should really talk to him about that stuff. Well, I mean, even even for you, anything new upcoming oh, I, projects? Well, I ju- I'm working on an album uh, with the wonderful band, right? With my wonderful band. Yeah, <laughs> I'm working on an album. I'm finally getting it done. It's been in the works for ten years, and I'm finally getting it. Well, I you know, started with one group of musicians, and various things happened, and then I moved back to Baltimore and had to start all over with a new group of musicians. So it you know it's been a long time coming. But it's going to be a terrific album. I'm getting ready to do, I'm going to do a Kickstarter promo for it. So maybe uh, sometime within the year or next year? Or... Oh, I, I'm hoping that we can get it finished in the, by definitely by the fall. That's okay. my hope. Okay. Certainly have it out by the end of the year. Like I said, it's been 10 years in the making, so I'm really eager. We've started it. We have started recording. We just have, a, we still have a long way to go. So do you see any, uh, any touring with that album? Or? When, it, when the album comes out? I would love to, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not quite willing to, to live my life in the back of a van. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll have to see how it works out. But, you know, I'm just a little too old for the back of a van squeezed in between the drums and the, and the bass. But we do, we do play, we, you know, we do shows here in Baltimore and we have gone as far as, as uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And I'm hope I do a big Christmas show and I'm hoping to get that out on the road. And that will be my next album. Will be a Christmas album after I get this one done. But the, um, I also just finished working on two films, okay. uh, the fourth and fifth, and the Eating Out installment, in the Eating Out series. <laughs> Have and, you been? Uh, you've been in all five of those, right? I've been in four of them. In four of them, okay. In four of them, I was not in the first one, but I am now in the in four. I'm now in two, three, four, and five, which are still. I think four and five are still in production. They're shooting them both at the same time, which to me is insanity, but that's what they were doing. <laughs> so I was just in L.A. a couple of weeks ago working on those. And the, uh, if, if I'm going to plug anything, I should also plug um, All About Evil, which is now available on DVD, which I made a couple of years ago in, uh, in San Francisco with Joshua Grinnell. And that was how I was going to get to Minneapolis. It just didn't happen because okay. they, they, yeah. they took the film with a big stage show to Indianapolis. I mean, to many Indianapolis. Sorry, one too many cups of coffee this morning. <laughs> one of those Annapolises. <laughs> well, yes, we ha- we have an we have an, an Annapolis here in Maryland too. So I get the, all three of them confused. <laughs> well, uh, you've worked with, I mean, obviously uh, quite a few different directors and some uh, ones that you know are kind of kind of stick out or whatnot. But you also worked with like David Lynch. Is that right? I worked, yes, I did work with David Lynch. I, I was in Lost Highway. I actually filmed a scene. I just got a tiny part. I was the jury foreman when they were sentencing Bill Pullman to prison. And um, I, ha- you know, I forget what my line was, but yes, we sentenced you to death or whatever it was. <laughs> and I got the nicest note. I got invited to the cast screening, and then I got the nicest note from uh, 
from Dave, David, saying that uh, my scene had been cut. And I was really disappointed, but he kept my voice in it. So what's really odd is the, you know, the movie that I have almost the least connection with is what pops up on my IMDb page. <laughs> that's, that's the one they identify me with. That's hilarious. I don't know who puts I. I mean, I call it the inaccurate movie database. It's very odd. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. But out of all these different directors that you've dealt with and whatnot, who who would you say, I mean, is there anybody that you really did, can say that you loved working with the most? Is it John Waters or is it someone well, else? Well, I love or? working with John. I mean, he and I are very good friends. We were out the other night having a drink. It was his birthday. And, you know, I mean, we've been friends for 45 years. So, yes, and I enjoy privileges on a water set that I don't necessarily enjoy on any on other sets. I can go anywhere I want. I mean, I, I basically I'm. I'm a big deal say, on a water set where I may not be a big deal on somebody else's. But I've worked with uh, Lee Friedlander. I did two movies with her, uh, Lee, uh, Girl Play and a movie called Out at the Wedding, that were both real joys. She's very good. David Lynch was wonderful. And I, the um, uh, Alan Bracca, Hugh Alan Bracca that does the Eating Out movies, he act- actually directed the four, four and five. And I worked with him many, many years ago on his thesis film. And so it was really nice to work with him again. There's there's been very few people that I didn't like working with, and I wouldn't tell you their names anyway. (laughs) It's not the people from... They might get really important one day. Yeah, then you you don't want to burn your bridges. No. (laughs) I was going to say, it's not the people from the secret world of Alex Mack, I hope. No, but I, you know, I had a good time with that show. (laughs) You know, the idea that I was on Nickelodeon kind of amuses me. <laughs> yeah, I suppose a lot of the people that watched that show had no clue the uh, the other stuff. In I'm your, sure they didn't. On your resume, you yeah. know, and, but you know, it, it's I think it's unfair. I mean, look at look at um, Lawrence Fishburne. He got his start as Cowboy Curtis on the Pee Wee Herman show. <laughs> so, I mean, I think it's really unfair to to slot actors by their beginnings. Right. And, you know, some people, you know, Meryl Streep can pick and choose her roles. I'm not always that lucky. You know, most actors aren't that lucky. Most actors are, are happy to be offered anything or have to audition for a lot of stuff. You know, have to really work hard to get parts. So people don't quite understand the, the, the world of the working actor. And it's, it's, uh, it's easy. Well, you know, it's easy to judge. Well, Ton started out in uh, Catholic kindergarten and... He's turned out all right, so. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. There I go. had to spend five years with the nuns. <laughs> and it was torture. I never had one nice nun mm. in five years. Not one. Some weren't quite as bad, but none of them were nice. And it's funny. My mom had a friend who, kept, who would tell me all the time that she expected me to grow up to be one. Wow. And I kept saying, um, no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Is that something you can just pick up whenever? Or I suppose you got to start. What, to be a nun? Yeah. Well, in order for me to, I, <laughs> I suppose it would be possible for me, but then I'd have to go back to Catholicism. That's true. That's terrible. true. It's a terrible well, there, idea. There are things that are impossible <laughs> in life. And my returning to Catholicism is one of them. Well, I suppose we've had you on here for quite a while. We better uh, let you get going here. Do you have any parting words for us? Well, thanks for letting me plug. I appreciate that, and um, I don't know what your weather is like, but, you know, wear sunscreen. That's, that's actually not original, but... <laughs> that's good advice. It's good. Take a raincoat. Yeah. In, in, in my part of the world now, we were, we've been having monsoon rains in the afternoon. It's raining here now, so... Is it? We'll stick well, with there, the raincoat. There you go. Take a raincoat. That'll be my parting word. <laughs> that's good. I'll remember that. Okay. Well, this has been really fun. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. It's it's been it's been cool, and we'll be looking out for that album coming out soon. I'll I'll shoot you an email. All right, sounds great. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I really had fun. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye.